very interesting topic artificial intelligence within brackets natural stupidity now talk, talking about artificial intelligence and human empathy everyone wants things to be done out of jiffy take a child doesn't want to use even switches want to touch the touch phone and say the music system should be on Alexa play this for me everything has got to be in two seconds we earlier had two minute noodles which are liked by children but now two seconds process orientation each and everyone in this world want artificial intelligence to take over so as I speak there are thousand one people listening to me as to what subject I am talking what is that Ravi is going to talk next and then artificial intelligence of chat GPT tells what I am going to talk even I don't know but it's able to make out this is the way the world is transforming and we had interesting discussions just prior to this talking about the legacy systems how things are moving in this world and there is no stopping irrespective of whether it takes one year two years doesn't matter in the next two years if somebody is not doing a digital transformation they are out of any business leave alone insurance any business if somebody is not able to transform themselves so AI is playing a crucial role on one side we say AI is playing a crucial role all of us have one factor saying that insurance is something which is very emotional which means everybody is touchy about because it's an abstract subject and it has to have a human touch so AI and empathy is a topic that we are going to discuss and we have the eminent panelists from life general consulting TPA so it's a wide varied faculty members of people who are from different industries who have a different type of faculty in their thinking process as to how they are going to oh, answer our questions so I learn a lot from you welcome to all of you for this you. panel yeah now the buzzword is all about artificial intelligence everything has got to be automatic but then does it have a human empathy to it or does the transformation has it helped in touching human lives my first question is to Pankaj because he deals with all the health policies as a TPA when it comes to other policies when a corporate policy is there people are not bothered okay claims I mean but when somebody is hospitalized and that's a time everything comes handy and they are very emotional how does AI help Pankaj? Thank you so as we use the word empathy and the perfect meaning for that is you know understanding or putting ourselves in the situation of the other person with whom we are dealing with and that is the best way to you know give him other experience also and you can say that is way how we want to deal with also in this world if we have to succeed right so when we talk about artificial intelligence along with empathy I think the best way where we have also tried to do it you know is try to identify how we can help our customers in the best of the manners using the technology front to give him a smooth end-to-end -end process a very hassle-free kind of a customer uh, journey and as a technology if I have to say what has helped us you know understanding the the core data points of his past claims history or of his past coverage that has really helped us to put forward his current hospitalization maybe what we because that is what we regularly deal with and to minimize his uh, you can say the paperwork also and you know the the entire journey also right from cashless and to even the claims reimbursement part also so that has been one of our key focus areas and we are trying to leverage more and more in that yeah thanks Pankaj as we are talking about from an empathy point of view Pankaj was listing out a few things now I move on to the distribution side because insurance is all about marketing because it's always been a push product it's not a pull product all of us think that it's a, it's a happy feel no it's a push product all the time 
across the globe, not only in India, across the globe, it's a bush product. Though people may say there's a lot of awareness across the globe. In the last conference in Singapore, one of our guests was talking to a, a person from Japan. So your country is the fastest growing in insurance, highest level of insurance. How do you make it happen? Is it a pull product? He said, no, ours is also push product. But you have systems and process to push that product comfortably. My question to Vipin is, how does artificial intelligence help in distribution of products? Thank you, Ravi sir. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. I would like you to kindle your mind with a thought that what the customer wants today. When we have to be empathetic to the customer, the first thing we need to know, what is his state of mind right now? The recent revolutionized approach on everything on the platter for the customer, the customer wants everything free. He wants everything perfect. And he wants everything now. As Ravi sir just said, he wants in Jiffy, right? But he wants it perfect. How do we make it free? All of us have been using around 10 to 15 services every day at free. Starting from email to map and the, end, the list will not end. We are like that customer, right? To serve a customer who is wanting everything free, perfect and now, how do we give him that experience that even if he is making a, a small payment, which is the freemium kind of a version today and there are multiple models on that, right? You can make sachet products, you can make freemium models, you can give, you know, standard, you know, premium luxury as a categories and make the customer feel that whatever he is buying right now is like a free thing for him. He can experience it. We need to then divide the insurance as a service into two large sectors. One, high frequency, low severity, low frequency, high severity. With this, there comes the play of AI, there comes the play of digital solution, there comes the play of ability to analyze customer behaviors. And that is what in last two decades of distribution experience, I personally believe that how do I make a customer realize that high frequency, low severity, while purchasing the policy, he has that confidence that a claim which may come at least in next two years of time frame, he is going to have all the money he has paid back to him. That is one segment. And the other segment is low severity, uh, high severity and low frequency. That is where the challenge lies right now. The earthquake has not happened so frequently in India. There has been urban flooding and all. But then when there was a time the earthquake was not a compulsory coverage, a lot of customers started taking the coverage without earthquake. They are not in a seismic zone which will get. And that is how the industry will start behaving in a different direction. I don't need it, I will not buy it, right? But then how do I, and like, like typically the property, liability, marine to an extent is again high severity product, high frequency product. If you look at project insurance, how many projects fail, right? So that is the area wherein I see that huge involvement of AI in terms of analyzing the customer's risk today, making a perfect proposition and on the mutual trust basis, which was till this time in India was a question mark. I'll tell you when I, when I been to different markets across the globe, there are players which are and there are markets wherein you pay the premium by adjusting in the claim. You know, in India we have premium before risk start. But there are markets wherein, why? Because there's a good amount of trust. Now, today I can say that that amount of trust or that amount of confi confidence in the insurance company on the customers is available because of the regulatory influence, because of the regulatory. Today, I'll tell you, I don't have to think about customer 360 to a large extent because 
the KYC process, the you know the regulatory requirement is making me to be aware of a customer buying multiple policies. Now slowly, slowly the approach to know their financials, know their turnovers, know their movements, know their exports. I can do everything today and know the customer. I can know how many employees have exited in the company last month and whether the customer is declaring the right number of employees to me or not. With this knowledge, that trust gap which was there in, you know, earlier statement ki, if we, if we bring something like that in India, you know, nobody will pay any premium ever and take away all the claims, right? Only the people who are going to take. Now that bridge is, you know, slowly, slowly reducing. Now, as I said, high frequency, low severity, well taken care of, customer feels, experiences in two years of time. This is the product, these are the segments wherein there is high severity and low frequency, insurance industry has to really do something through technology through which they can make the either product position so perfect and so tiny that the customer doesn't feel the pinch of picking the premium payment. Thanks and Vipin. Uh, so I think from what Vipin says, artificial intelligence is going to help us in a big way in distribution of products, especially profit orientation business if you are to get into. Thanks Vipin for the inputs. Now. A person who has come from different industries, from right from build desk, different things, and has experienced, Ankit, I would like to know from you, yeah. while we are talking about AI, there's a lot of things that is happening about the digital transformation, image transformation and things like that. Could you elaborate on that? How does sure. it help? Thanks, uh, Mr. Ravi, for that question. Uh, you know, first thing is, when, when I look at AI or any technology, and the tech gurus can curse me for this. I'm not a big fan of looking at the technology first. You know, the way I, I look at technology is technology is just an enabler. You need to look at the use case. You know, look at what your customer actually wants or wants to pay for, and then accordingly work around the solutions. Now coming, I will give you some examples on the digital transformation yeah. and all. You know, some of us, and, and you would remember, sir, that long back, a motor claim, Right, uh, if there is a claim, you need to fill up a lot of paperwork and then take the car to the garage, then somebody will come and assess, right, then that file will move from one desk to another, to the third, to the fourth, and by the time you get an approval, perhaps three, four weeks have gone. Correct. Right. Now from there, we have actually moved right now to 15 minutes. Right. Right, so at Bajik, we have a product called Motor on the Spot Claim Settlement. Correct. Right, so up to a 30,000 rupees of claim. Right, you can just open our app, click certain photographs, give your driving license. The AI machinery using the photogrammetry technology solution as well, right, which is reading the images, right, right, and and we have the data for the last 20 years, right. So so that data is there on the lake. You have the AI program running on top of it. Using that entire intelligence, we are able to give that decision to the customer in minutes. That hey. This is what we are approving. If you are okay, again, thanks to the entire UPI and IMPS, you know, the payment systems in India, we're able to transfer that money in the customer's account instantly, right? right? And then it's up to the customer to go to any garage or workshop and get the work done, right? right? So we move from those three to four weeks to 15 minutes. Yes, technology has helped a lot, right? But again, as I said, use case lead base. You know, you can't just simply go ahead and say that, okay, today there is a new technology buzzword in the market. Uh, in the boardroom, some of the board members are saying, what are you doing about it? And then you say, oh, we will do something about it. No, it's not going to work out, right? Be because the critical reason is that if you get onto that path of following what, you know, simply the board member is saying and then just going ahead with it, you will not build that technology for scale. And if you can't build a technology solution which you can run at scale, uh, you will not get the adoption, you will not get the results that you are looking for. Yeah, thanks. Now, when we are talking about the AI tools, and one of the important things that we require from insurance perspective is predictive modeling. It's something which is very, very important when you are in a business, it's full of uncertainties. Now, I go upon to Shweta to talk about her experience on predictive modeling, how AI can help us. Thank you, Ravi. So, uh, one of the things what people need to understand is AI 
is meant to assist human judgment okay uh, in the insurance parlance typically if i take it's an underwriting scenario okay uh, an underwriting is a very very core expertise which needs somebody to assess the case basis the facts given and exercise a certain amount of judgment okay uh, this is not typically under the scope of automation because the facts vary from case to case the decisions <coughs> vary from case to case now here's where artificial intelligence can step in uh, it can start tracking basis what facts what decisions were taken start assisting these in terms of uh, uh, you know tracking saying that in the last 10 cases <coughs> uh, basis these data this is the decision that has kind of been taken and this is also where machine learning comes into place so as the model keeps learning then it starts exercising the judgment and then you leave very little scope for the human to be able to take the judgment what this also helps is while most of the data models look at the past data and they kind of bring a trend they kind of bring in outliers they kind of bring in the uh, parameters that influence a particular model uh, ai will enable more real time influencing of the parameters and therefore much more real time decisions much more dynamic decisions taken and also keep learning and not have the dependency on the person this is where ai can make a significant impact and like i said the predictive models can be more real time and onward looking rather than only looking backwards uh, thank you shweta uh, i thought you were a chartered accountant only now i realize you are something <laughs> different you. as well very good shweta that's fantastic analytically speaking what exactly an insurer wants is something which actually a helps us in doing these things now when it comes to the question of the current economy we talk about the old economy new economy new economy is driven by we call it as a fang economy fang is nothing but facebook apple netflix google what these guys have done today amazon and all you have personalization each one of us have a personalized space for us personalization is something which has taken all these companies to greater heights naturally insurance also has to move towards that so i look forward to your thoughts from one of the companies which has implemented very well so sanjay your thoughts yeah, on thanks, that Ravi. Yeah, uh, thanks ravi yeah so i'll start with a statement uh, which i i, mean, I think ankit uh, alluded to it you know ai is not a silver bullet right neither neither it's a kind of evil especially in the parlance of gen ai where we say that it can create things on its own with no possibly no human control going forward having said that i think uh, when we look at ai in terms of personalizing the entire value chain in life insurance and i'll give a couple of examples of what we at sgfc life have right. done so far you know right from the product introduction right the you know utilization of ai in terms of segmenting personalizing the product solutioning you know aiding the distributor or the agent who is at the you know interaction as you said it's a push product right so you need an intermediation mostly right and that's how it has kind of evolved and continues to be in the same direction forever in all the markets if i have to say right so the product introduction itself is based on the customer's attributes demographics the profiles uh, even the impressions which happens in the social media health and lifestyle you can create a product solution and that's where ai helps it helps the agent when he is interacting with a customer in real time what are the right nudges and the script or the pitch which uh, you know ai can provide to the agent to uh, kind of sell the right kind of uh, you know based on the profile of the customer the right kind of product solution starting with that we are a life insurance company right our core is uh, underwriting it's a risk assessment i think a lot of work has been done there uh, right from you know moving from a state where we used to have manual underwriting some 20 25 years back to uh, a step towards digital underwriting where we kind of uh, literally transpose the manual uh, to a digital platform to simplify underwriting levels to you know continuous underwriting where you not only do a risk assessment at a point of time but you also keep on kind of engaging with the customer in terms of understanding the uh, health life cycle the wellness attributes through ecosystem and other uh, you know uh data points from wearable devices possibly you know and how you can continuously create offer and keep on adding and possibly up selling as per the lifestyle needs of the customer up uh, coming to uh the you know we are as a industry you know we don't have too many episodes to engage with the customer right it's very 
uh, transactional at, at times. At times, I mean, that's where we try to solve uh, solve for it. How do you ensure that there's a continuous engagement with customers? Is it only on the policy anniversaries? Answer is no. And a very impactful use case of AI is in the way we communicate and engage with the customer. You know, and that's where the whole uh, sense of empathy, you know, it can never be undermined. You know, I keep saying this, you know, the human touch is irrepressible, right? That remains there, but it can be added to a great deal by applying AI in understanding the sentiment and the emotion of the customer and then kind of tailor-made the communication and the touch point to the customer. Coming to the, you know, for our industry, the moment of truth is the claim settlement, right? There, I, you know, the way AI tools, not only in terms of reducing, as Ankit said, that, you know, in general insurance, for motor insurance, we have reduced the timeline from four weeks to 15 minutes. I think a lot of things have been done in this uh, area where the AI actually helps understand the sentiment, aids the customer, you know, in terms of going through the whole motion of uh, getting the uh, claim settled and payout, because it's a very, very emotional thing. And that's the moment of truth we have been kind of working through or the life cycle journey of a customer. So I would say in terms of value chain and the personalization, the number of use cases right from the first time we touch base with the customer to the terminal handshake. And maybe beyond that, in terms of the household, you know, we are talking about uh, Ghargar Bhima, right? That's right. the concept we are talking about. And we are talking about uh, heterogeneity of our Indian market, which is like too complex for people to comprehend in terms of, you know, creating very defined four or five brackets. It's just not going to help. But that's where we keep on challenging ourselves. Having said this, AI, as I said, is not a silver bullet. Human touch remains of a sense. Uh, the intricate conversations which we need to have with the con uh, customer because the product is complex. AI does help there. The, you know, the oversight which we need to have in terms of a human touch, especially in terms of frauds and other, uh, I'd say the aspects of data biases which can creep in. You know, when you are deploying AI at a kind of a very large scale, very often you tend to uh, leave technology and processes as a proxy for what customer really needs and from us, right? But that's where we need to maintain that oversight. So b having an empathetic overhand and the oversight from the human side, complementing it, it with uh, the, you know, the whole tech uh, drive using the AIs and generative AIs in future, I think that's the way we I look at it, uh, you know, in terms of personalizing the entire life cycle. Great. Sajay, thanks for the elaborate answer, which clearly explained to us uh, as to how AI helps in personalization as well as uh, the regular flow of events. Now, when everybody is using the word AI, generative AI, etc., everywhere data is involved, and every third day there is a new rule that comes on data privacy norms, that norms, etc. All of us have to follow these rules and regulations. And when you say data, the first word that comes to my mind is always risks and challenges. I have been a compliance officer for 10 years, so that will be a first thing. Now, my question to Soumya from Deloitte, how do you foresee these challenges being overcome. Yeah. No, thank you. And uh, it's a great question because while you talk about AI, GNA of late, but the real adoption, you know, has multiple challenges in the organization and the enterprises, and data is one of them. And to to make it a little bit more, you know, think granular. One is the access and availability of the data. So the difference between AI and a normal analytics is a normal analytic <coughs> algorithm is data plus rules equal to output. And for AI is data plus output gives to the rules, right? So you need to have the data and the output to create the rules. And hence, you know, I think, and for a long period of time, we need to have this so that you can train the model to do it better. Just to give an example that, you know, I think in the earlier days of AI, you know, when Facebook or, you know, I think uh, that point of time, a lot of the organizations were thinking about unsupervised learning for the faces. They fed the models millions of images to show that this is a human face, this is the face of a cat, right? Uh, but for a human baby, you know, my son is four years old, it probably requires, you know, looking at 300 human beings to understand that, okay, that's a human face. So a, a model needs to feed a lot of data to make the models perfect or make the models better. And in this case, you know, I think A, the availability of the data is very important and the continuous way to kind of, 
you know, aiding the model to continuously making it better is going to be an important driver to kind of make really enterprise good models. What you also see is that, you know, uh, it's, it's not only about the challenge, it's about the data. It's also about the human being and the change management associated with it. So tomorrow if we say that, you know, I think you know, we are going to completely automate the process, you know, I think there are a lot of apprehension, there is a lot of kind of thinking that, okay, whether it is really, you know, I mean, completely risk-free adoption, right? You talked about the risk, right? And whether you are going to completely kind of eliminate that thing. We are in an age where you're thinking about working with AI rather than completely, you know, AI replacing the human work, right? So how do you make the operating model such that, that, you know, I mean, there is a big change management element involved in it makes it important to create that the AI is um, used rightly and, you know, I think adopted across, you know, I think the organization. Uh, thank you, Soumya. So, oh, we have got a few seconds or a few minutes left. In the meanwhile, when we go across to everybody, we have not introduced. My style is, I'll introduce everyone with the last question. One word answer, I don't want more. Okay. It's very tough, right? Uh, sitting in the panel and uh, we saying one word answer. Now, we have Pankaj who takes as a vice president from MD India. So my question to Pankaj is, should I spend on AI? Yes or no? I have only close-ended questions. No open-ended questions. Time is running out. Yes. A yes. big yes. Very good. Now, we have Ankit from different backgrounds come. For the last five years has been heading Bajaj Alliance Journal on the customer experience, heading customer experience. Right? Now, has AI transformed your customer experience? Yes. Oh, everybody is saying yes, sir. Manojji, you have told them something already? The answers? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's wonderful. Right. Now, to Sanjay, who is heading the HDFC life, has got a great experience. Data privacy norms, is it required or is it a hampering? Now I give you more space for here. No, oh, it is, it is. Huh? I think uh, it's required. You know, ultimately when we talk about this hyper-personalization, utilizing, you know, AI and different models, whether in prediction, whether in kind of creating this whole service touch points or product propositions, you know, we are utilizing a lot of data which is publicly available, right? Unless, but ultimately, what we are trying to do is we are solving it for the customer, right? The data privacy aspect has to be kind of taken care right. of. Right. That was okay. Sanjay so, from HDFC yeah. Life going to Vipin. Uh, Vipin, we have been talking about AI, the challenges, the opportunities, etc. Now, one of the things which we are talking about is personalization. What is that you do for personalization? Just one sentence. Talking from the small and medium enterprise customer perspective, which can start from a small shop to a, a big mall, the covers and the proposition should be precisely catering to his requirement. Thanks, Vipin. Vipin, Senior Vice President from Tata IAG. Right. Shweta, Ideal Vice to Q Life Insurance. Lot of old systems. We are talking about AI. The basic things itself is not changing. Where is the question? I give you two minutes time for this. Thank you. Uh, you know, one of the questions uh, people often get asked is uh, why are you not doing AI? Uh, you know, it's so much uh, important. But what AI is expected to do needs a lot of your basic systems in place. And, and I'll just give you an example. How many of you have called a call center in the recent times for any experience? Okay. Very <laughs> rarely, right? Imagine this, you're a customer who's, who has no time, just wants to run, but you have to end up calling at the call center and somebody is saying, Achha, you want your fund statement, press 1, you want your bank statement, press 2. You're irritated, right? You, you just want somebody to quickly address your concern, okay? Or you want something on the go. Now, on the other hand, if you're an agitated customer who's tried to find everything online, Okay? But you've not got the solution, you need to desperately talk to somebody. And again, you're listening to press 1 for fund statement, press 2 for bank statement. The problem is we're not able to understand which customer lands where. Okay? Yeah. And, and our systems don't talk to each other. 
so it's it's about trying to put the right uh, channel for the right reason and when your basic systems are not talking to each other it's very difficult for ai also to go back and learn all those things that you're expecting as a final output and therefore ai is a very important investment but before you get to that investment a lot of the basics need to be set right the systems need to talk to each other the output has to be consistent omni channel the branch guy has to say the same thing as the call center guy has to say the same thing as the website uh, if you see today most of the cases all these things are very different thanks sweta so that's a very very interesting thought for all of us as insurers we need to look into and then it's time up but before that somia will tell us from deloitte perspective there is a lot of investment gap in investing in ai when some companies have gone ahead leave front some are lagging behind so mia your thoughts on this two minutes yeah. to you okay great again you know i think investment in ai everybody is saying that every organization should do and i firmly believe that the only thing is that every technology investment also requires uh, thinking about what is the return on investment rather than thinking about an enterprise wide approach a lot of the times where the organizations take benefit is thinking about like by either journey or by functions or by you know i think a channel uh, uh, i'll not say just a use case study approach but an approach with a specific objective in the mind and getting that and then you know i think you know once you get that one particular success that actually begets more success then you have a pull from the organization to really think about the where all that i can apply ai rather than one person sitting in a corner who is kind of thinking about how do you apply in every particular part of the business thank you somia thank you eminent panelists for your valuable inputs during this session and uh, my sincere thanks to somia from deloitte shweta from edelweiss vipin jain from tata aig sanjay from hcfc ankit from bajaj and pankaj from md india while you give a big round of applause give a big round of applause to suresh mathur md of ama i am iram who is grace is present who is the chief guest for the event welcome sir thank you all well uh, on that note i'll really want if anybody wants to you know connect with you for a one question or suggestion something like that a q and a just somebody yeah yeah, yeah uh, thank yeah, you so please please when any, any questions, panelists are such an expert and industry leaders anybody yeah. so Can moderator have, don't ask question i'll not know any answers they will know okay yes any so i think we'll be seated we'll be seated yeah 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 okay fine 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 yeah hello so my question was that you spoke about ai and human empathy but a lot of the times when your ai models are being trained the data quality is also of great significance because if the data quality is not having the correct uh, necessary output to be given to the model the model will not perform so what are your data quality measures that you all implement within the organization to ensure that the end product of the ai is accurate because today also like mostly the gartner and the biggest of the biggest agencies compare data quality to be the leading cause of 2024 problems in the data segment so uh, ankit sure. ankit ankit will take this question i'll just go back to the example which i gave about the motor on the spot right now ai as you rightly mentioned won't work if the data is not there at the first place right and of course second part is the data needs to be of a good quality as else you know the entire model fails now the first thing that we did was we realized that you know such a huge modeling cannot be done on prem so we created our data lake right and of course the second part of this was the transfer of that data to the data lake in a semi structured fact you know manner because you can't have a 100% structured data as well right now that's the biggest challenge now there there is no shortcut to it you have to deploy your human mind right to actually build those things and create those levers which actually transforms that data from an unstructured to a semi structured one right and then on top of that ai is about experimenting is about learning right you need to have that risk appetite to actually fail yes. right make those mistakes so once you make those mistakes you fail you will learn and you will make it better so yeah thanks sir yeah if i can just add to that point uh, you know there's always a prospective and a retrospective okay uh one of the things that becomes very critical a lot of the junk is in the system because there have been no data validations at the time of input 
you at least prospectively start adding those validations in terms of the newer data capture and therefore ensure that at least junk stops coming in. And then the cleanup is, a, is anyways a parallel activity. So one of the very critical <coughs> things is putting that prospective data validation. So for unstructured to structured data, do you all use NLP, OCR, any of these techniques? Yes. And one yeah. thing that AI can also improve the data quality and where there is no data to simulate the data to create, you know, I think the model is based on that. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, thank you, panelists. Can we have a huge round of applause?